Hey, Snackers, Matt DiNapoli here. I'm a manager of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. Hello, Snackers. This is Kareem Iskander. I'm a tech advocate with Cisco Learning and Certification. Welcome to episode 49 of DevNet Snack Minutes. DevNet Snack Minute is your weekly 10-minute all things DevNet, giving you a quick, fun way to learn about Cisco APIs, coding, as just cool stuff that we do here at DevNet. And today we have our guest, Michael, who's going to talk to us about cloud-native topics and cloud native within Cisco, but I'm gonna let him introduce himself first, Mike. Hey, how you doing? My name is Mike Chenitz. I uh, help lead the strategy around cloud native uh, within Cisco. So I'm looking forward to you know having this conversation with you guys today. It's gonna be awesome. So uh, let's start with like a super high level, vague question, open-ended. Um, what is Cisco doing today in cloud native? You know, that's a great question. And it's a question we get all the time because when you think Cisco, you think of things like uh, networking and servers and things like that. And really, you know, people haven't realized that we've shifted, you know, not shifted, but we've added is what is the way that I should put it. We've added these yeah. cloud native technologies, technologies like Kubernetes, technologies like a service mesh or some orchestration or maybe some automation, you know, whatever it is, we have those technologies now. And people don't realize it. So it's, it's something that we really, you know, we, we have to do a better job of getting it out there. So we can go talk about, you know, how we're engaging this, this kind of uh, model. You know, how are, we, how are we dealing with the old and the new within Cisco? So, you know, traditionally we had things like IT ops. And IT ops, we're great at that. We're great at doing IT ops. We're great at servers. We're great at network. So what we have to get equally known for are things like, um, you know, like, like Kubernetes and how we do that. So, Mike, um, you mentioned a lot of uh, cloud native applications and tools that you know that are out there today. What is what platforms are are is Cisco integrating with, and what are we doing with all of that within Cisco? Yeah, great question. So, when we think about uh, where we are, we have to kind of combine the IT ops and the DevOps persona because we're you know we're really good at IT ops. We have the servers, we have the you know the network, and and all of those kinds of things, but what we what we have to do is take that kind of knowledge and that that area and and bring it over so that the IT ops and the DevOps can move together. So we have this platform called Intersight that allows us to do that. Luckily, it was built for the originally for the servers and the and the network and the and the fabric interconnects and things like that. And we've expanded it out to be more of a holistic platform around cloud native and hybrid cloud. So now what we can do is we could, we've added the capability to do virtualization, to do uh, Kubernetes, and also integrations with things like HashiCorp Terraform, and, um, and uh, you know, also some low code kind of automation through Intersight Cloud Orchestrator. So whether you're in DevOps or IT ops, we've kind of integrated those two personas together to kind of meet in the middle and to consume things the way that people want to consume it. So if you're in IT ops, you can consume things in uh, maybe Intersight Cloud Orchestrator, where you, where it's low code, it looks like little Lego pieces. You can just drag them together and create things like server server profiles and map them to VMs and also map them to storage. And then maybe hand it over to somebody that's in uh, DevOps that might want to consume th things as infrastructure as code, something like using Terraform as a you know as a service. So great things like that. Yeah, this is really exciting because now as you're talking about it, I'm starting to realize, and you mentioned the term hybrid cloud. What I'm starting to realize is we're starting to bring, and we've talked about this before, but we're starting to bring the experiences that, that organizations have with public cloud services like AWS and Azure and GCP. It sounds like we're bringing them on premises and allowing us to bridge the experience, whether it be application deployments or infrastructure management between those hybrid situations. Um, it, is that my understanding? Is that where we're going for there? Yeah, I think that's what people want. So we we look at it and we say, you know, what is it that people really want to to do in the DevOps realm? You know, as I said, we've already done a lot with the IT ops realm. So what? How do we get that DevOps persona? And the way you do that is by making it a, a way that people are accustomed to consuming things. So. If I'm in DevOps, I'm accustomed to consuming a service from a cloud, consuming something from, uh, you know, an API. And really, I want that same kind of, uh, you know, methodology, but on-prem. 
I call it the cloud native data center because really what people want is they don't want to, in the DevOps world, they don't want to worry about the infrastructure. They just want to consume the services. They want a level of automation that they're accustomed to using. And they want to make it as easy, easy or easier than they're already doing. If we can do that, then we can we have a great solution. Mike, what what would be your definition of cloud native, like bare bones boiling it down? Yeah, so I have it's it's funny because I start out all my meetings with this definition of cloud native. Because really, when people <laughs> think cloud native, depending on where you are in the industry, it could mean something totally different. But to me, right. cloud native is a methodology, and that is the true form of the word. It's a methodology of consuming things through orchestration and through infrastructure as code and through, you know, all of those types of things that you kind of associate with working with something in the cloud, but doesn't necessarily have to be in the cloud. It could be something that's on-prem. So, you know, that's really what the cloud native is. It's, it's a methodology. And that's really what, you know, what I start out with because it's, it's, it's interesting that, you know, people still have all these, um, you know, thoughts about what cloud native is. And a lot of it has to do with the marketing of the cloud, you know? So, you know, there's so much marketing in the cloud that people just assume that that's what it means, you know? So, but here we are, and I'm still having to put that definition in every single deck that I have. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we we talk about it all the time and we haven't really sat there and said, well, this is what it is. And so I appreciate your your definition there. Thank you. <laughs> and I think, I think when, as we're talking about this, Mike, I think, what we're doing as Cisco and how we're kind of bridging what Matt said, bridging the gap um, between the public cloud and on-prem fits nicely in this hybrid world that we live in. Because what I've noticed is um, not everybody has their um, infrastructure in you know public cloud providers, um, but they want to expand. So having that ability to you know have this kind of um, tool that's agnostic to whether it's in public or in, on private uh, at your, you know, in, in front of you to be able to manage all of that allows you to expand in, you know, the different areas. So I think it's, it's a powerful thing that we're doing from a Cisco perspective. Um, that said, if I'm looking to learn more about what Cisco is doing and cloud native, and, you know, I've lived in this infrastructure world for years, and I'm looking to take that step and jump where, what would be some of the things that I would want to learn and start with? Yeah. So it's, it's, that's, that's a great question. Um, you know, because really what we've done is we've shifted the way that we're creating applications. So a lot of it has to do with more the app dev kind of persona, because what we did, the reason why this is, and I'd love to go into this reason, and maybe this could be a whole episode by itself, but the reason why we shifted <laughs> to microservices is because of the fact that the app developer would create an application. That application would be a monolithic app or something like that, that would, you'd have to check in that whole app and you have the whole, you have this capability of bringing everything down because it's just one piece and you got to check everything in and check everything out. It was extremely dangerous. So what we've done is we've broken up those pieces into microservices and made them purpose-based. So if you have a cash service, it's cash. If you have a shopping service, you, you can just switch out those services and upgrade just that service and have them communicate together. So really, when we talk about what you're looking at, you're thinking about that workload. You got to break it down to what, what is, why are we doing this, and what is it? So it's you think about the workload that's a microservices-based workload. What does it run on? Typically runs on Kubernetes. How do we monitor it? We need something like full stack observability. Maybe something like API clarity can help. I know we've talked about that in the past. Um, <laughs> You know, there's, so you got to think about the security of the microservices. You have to think about uh, policy and governance, you know, so all these types of things, it really comes down to, let's look at that workload and everything that comes around it. And really, those are the types of things you want to look at. I would say starting out, let's, let's look at Kubernetes because that's the base of everything. You know, I, I would have said, you know, a few years ago, maybe it's Docker, but really Docker is more of a development platform now. And, you know, Kubernetes has become that container platform or container orchestration platform that everybody's using now. And Docker is, is kind of irrelevant in that space now. I hate to say that because <laughs> I love Docker. But, uh, you know, it is becoming more, it's more of a developer tool now. My head is spinning. We could sit here for an hour and a half and, and talk about all these things. But, you know, uh, we listed, talking about Kubernetes, I think we'll have you back and maybe talk about that and maybe provide a demo. Um, you talked about how Intersight is tying in a bunch of different tools into 
uh, managing Kubernetes, um, setting up workflows, and optimizing those workflows. Maybe we we have you back for a bunch of those. Would you be willing? Would you be willing to do that for us? But yeah, no, absolutely. I think it's great. I think it's a great conversation. It's always great talking to you guys. You know. Uh... Unfortunately, uh, yeah, we're kind of at time. But before we let you go, I'm going to let Kareem ask the ask the question of the day. Um, we ask oh, all of no. our new guests this, and uh, we're going to put you on the spot. But if you had to pick one superpower, what would that be, and why? You know, so this is a tough one. Now, you know, I like all of them, so that's that's a really really tough one for for different reasons. But I think I want to read people's minds because there's so many times I'm like, what is oh, that no. guy thinking? <laughs> You know, what is that guy thinking when he says that, you know? So I think that, that's something I would love to have is just, you know, understand, just to get some perspective, not to use it for anything bad, Ooh. but just to understand like where people are coming from sometimes, you know? Uh, that's fair. That's fair. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's snackers, one, but yeah. Uh, yeah, be nervous around Mike when he's attempting to read your minds. Um, oh, that's all the time we have for today. And, uh, Join us in the next episode. This next special episode will be our 50th episode of DevNet Snack Minute. Uh, we'll have some uh, fun fun treat for you guys. And uh, look out for uh, future episodes with Mike as we deep dive deeper into cloud native. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Snackers. Thanks, guys.